was I was sh I was shocked that I only got two emails telling me that that the aerial aerial shooting um, they basically said don't take away that tool that that's what they said in terms of being able to have uh, animal control but not a lot of people had you know, had um, emailed me saying that they don't support it uh, so I, I thought that that's a good sign but this one here gonna be a little bit more difficult because on this one here. The state law doesn't allow us not to set up a commission. We can do that on our own through the voters, through the county charter. But error shooting, you know, that 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 process is actually governed or is uh, overseen by the state state uh, DLNR. You know, that's that's their. This is something that they uh, uh, that they do as part of their rules. Uh, in fact, Isla, if you guys read the article in the paper, he basically said that you know it's a state statute, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna continue to do it or whatever he said. You know. Yeah, it's not a state statute. It, it's a it's an administrative rule, because an administrative rule. Mr. Sabati said that to me. Basically, said you as a hunt, you guys cannot go and shoot animals from the sky, you know. And, and he goes on to explain that. But then the very last sentence says, you know, unless otherwise allowed by the department. So that that's what gives them the, the you know the ability to do that. So, but. In, in all in cases, state law does supersede county law. I mean, that's we, you know they're a big brother with a with a with the one at the county level. So this year, you know, if we can get this, I'm sure uh, I had the attorney general office actually call my office asking for the legislation. That has never happened before, and I've been in council for 12 years. You usually gotta gotta change the attorney general. The attorney general is like the lawyers for the state. It's, it's Abercrombie's lawyers. It's a, for the state lawyers, yeah. And they've never, ever, ever, ever called the local level and asked for legislation. Normally, we got to change them and ask them, can you give us a reading on this, on this law and how you interpret it? But they called me the day the article broke in the paper, and they asked for the legislation. So it's got somebody's attention up pretty high. So I'm expecting the AG to probably send something down that says that the county does not have the jurisdiction to enact a law that the state can supersede. Now, and I just, I just want to let you folks know that I'm not going into this with my eyes closed. I know that, I know that, and you guys should know that too. But I said, and I, I, I've said this to the hunters, and we, we shared this thought, and that is, you know what? It's about time that we begin to say that we gotta declare home rule on certain things. And you know what, if you like doing it in Honolulu, you wanna do it Kauai, you want to do it Maui, okay, it's up to you. But we change you to our legislative staff. You change the rule that says, exception, Big Island, Island of Hawaii, you know? And, and, and what we want to do is we want to tell them what is, I mean, this is just, I mean, even the scientists that I talked to, they don't argue about how inhumane this thing. They, they don't argue that. And, and they're probably not looking forward to the fact that there'll be pictures that show that really, that's graphic pictures that shows what's going on in the mountain. You know, and, and, but they do have the law on their side, so to speak. But what we gotta do is we as an island county gotta begin to say, this is not Pono. And when you think about it, when you think about the host culture, the Hawaiian culture, they teach you about Abu Pua'a, right? You know how it's more than you can eat, right? You know waste? I mean, shoot, I'm not Hawaiian, I'm Filipino, but Mufa, I always told you, you know waste? In a plantation camp, you don't waste food, you don't waste. You should get leaking if you eat all the food. You don't waste. And this is just not pulled on. So what this is, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of legal crap about this, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm gonna get a lot of legal stuff come down. But I just think it's just we gotta take a stand. And we gotta start, and like, like Tony said, there's only 200 mountain, uh, 200 sheep left on the mountain. We gotta do something. And, but it gotta be based on the fact that it's just not, it's just not pulled on. And if you read the, when you guys get a chance, really read the findings. We took a, a bunch of people sitting together and just kind of putting their ideas together of, of why we think this is not going on. And that's why we have it. So understand that you probably, if you do come to the meeting, you'll probably hear from the AG. You'll probably hear from the Corporation Council, you know, which is the lawyers for the county, saying that, you know, the state law supersedes. I say screw it. I say screw it. Let them say what they want to say. But what we do is let's put this ordinance on the books. Because once this is on the books, this is how I look at it. Once the county of Hawaii says this is something that we feel needs to be enacted as law, 
that, you know what, state legislature, you guys get off you guys' ass and make sure that they don't do this. You know, again, we're just giving them the, you know, giving them the, the, the ammunition. And as long as they can go to, you know why, I, I tell you, I'm a politician, right? You always worry about getting elected. You always worry about who support, you know, supporting things that, that or, or trying to lay low so people don't get mad at you, you know? And, and, and there's a lot of lobbying effort for these things, you know, at the county, at the state level, you know? And, um, but if we give them reasons to stand up, let's give them a reason to stand up by having the people of this island say, but it's not Polo, man. It's got to stop for you. It should have stopped a long time ago. But just be be well aware that there's going to be some probably some legal stones tossed our way. But I think we just got to say that this is just not right. It's not our. It's not part of our culture. This is this is Western civilization thinking. It's not what we do in Hawaii. It's not how. Yes. So DLNR Hawaiian Homes and stuff. Do they have a game management plan to? manage their animals so it doesn't get overpopulated? No. Mm -hmm. I, I can answer that. No. There were several plans made, one in the late 60s, early 70s, I think, and then there was uh, one recently, and it's just sitting there collecting dust. They have the plans, but they don't implement it, yeah? They funded $50,000 for Hoffman is the right one, and he did it, and it's pretty good, but they don't okay. want to. They're just so they're only out, the only thing they do is, say, like, eradication. That, yeah. That, yeah. So far, it seems to be their yes, that's, plan that's the budget that they got. That's their their plan. game management plan is, yeah. seems to be eradication, eradication, eradication or bringing down the numbers dramatically. <clears throat> yes, it's a, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the cheapest way to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's the most cost effective way, and that's that's why the two scientists have been right to me about this. You know, like I said, they didn't talk about the how the practice. They talked about it being a tool. To make it more efficient, and I mean, if you look at it from their point of view, you know, you know, it's it's probably the easiest thing to do: to chase the sheep until they cannot run, yep. and then blast them from 30 yards away. You know, and that, that's what they do. So, <coughs> is it efficient? Pro probably, but that's why within this thing here, what we're talking about here is that, uh, like I put in there, there are many hunters in the county of Hawaii that wish to have access to these areas to provide subsistence for their families, and at the same time they will be removing the animals from the affected area. In other words, use the hunters. Yes. Use the hunters. And that, that stuff, you know, maybe it's not as effective, right? But it's, I think it falls with the tradition in our culture. And yeah, where it's subsistence versus... It's in our versus, state and federal laws. Yeah, right. It's in our state and federal laws. It's granted to us. Right. That they have to follow those laws. Even though the state supersedes the county, the state is still following not following the laws and not doing their judiciary responsibility. And that's what we're going to hold them to. Yeah. That's so the lawsuit. Yes. Yeah. But so the, this committee would be almost like if there is like an overpopulation somewhere else and uh, the committee could be talking and say this area does not have um, X amount of game it could use for game. They could possibly that's take the game from that area and be introduced to an area where there's no not enough game to for the hunters to hunt, and there would be food on their plate. It would be something like that. that that's game management. That's exactly game management. Yeah, exactly. What we're going to do, Dominic, in the lawsuit is we're going to go back and reevaluate the property that they've already taken. Mm -hmm. Then from there, everybody knows sitting here, there is areas we got to protect. Mm -hmm. So if you have 10,000 acres, you're probably only going to have 100 acres. Mm -hmm. Then from there, once we get to that point, we have to go back and put animals back in place. And eventually, when that gets a certain area, we hold down the fences, right? But those areas do have to be protected. And everybody sitting here knows that. We have, we, all of us folks, we all hunt. We know we go inside there, we see different plants, we see different things. And most of us, we don't go back and tell them, because when we tell them, they want to go back and take the land. So we don't say anything. So these areas that the animals are harming is because they've never made a game management plan. They don't have a carrying capacity of the animals. So the animals is causing a travesty. Just like what's happening over in Maui when we complain to them about the deer. There is federal funding available for game fencing. So if you have crops, you have ranches and whatnot that's being destroyed, they have that available and they, and they, and they never speak of it. They don't let the funding be available for the people. So that's, that's some of the issues that we're going to be brought up. In all other states, we're the only state that doesn't have a game management plan. Yeah. It's easy to say that. There's so much animals 
we got to take them out, we got to protect them. And that way the public say, oh yeah, get planted, we got to take them. Like when you drive over Saturday Road, you see all the boats at, everybody think, oh, get choked, sheep, get choked, boats, but there's not. Because they're confined in one area, the yeah. port. Yeah. It's smart, it's the only place they yeah. can't be shot. They cannot fly by the road to shoot the animal, yeah. So they all hang around over there. And in PTA, they're all fenced up to that area already. See, no 30 years ago, they could tell us these things. Because at that time, Hawaii was the heat, we didn't know what was going on. 30 years later, we know what they have done is not working. <coughs> Their scientific approaches is not working. It's only causing a harm. <coughs> If I could say to Bignan, we do have two bills that's coming up. Basically, an individual can give testimony. Uh, they get three minutes per item. So if you're someone that can speak three minutes on each item, you basically would have six items. So they would, you know, they would time you, and the bell would ring, and, would, and the chairman would say, okay, you need to move on to the next item. So if you're going to come testify, you actually have six minutes to speak, if you like. Or, of course, less than that if you, you, you prefer. But uh, you, could, you could speak on two separate items and have three minutes each. Can you testify online by any chance? No. You can testify via, via video conferencing where you could go to Waimea, Kona, or Pahoa because the meeting will be in Hilo. And you can testify at that location. Or you can send it, uh, if you want to do online, you can email your testimony. Okay, so if I have outside people from Hawaii, can they testify on this or not? Oh, yeah. You take testimony from every place. Yeah, I mean, if people. Um, the, the PETA, exa PETA, for example, they're going to get their members to give testimony to this thing. So, yeah, no, anyone can provide testimony. Uh, don't have to be just from here. It can be state, you know, you can get connected statewide. You can, you know, tell your, you know, your coconut wireless to have them send uh, the, the, the um, email uh, testimony. And you guys could send the email testimony to my email address, which is, uh, well, it's biyagong at co.hawaii.hi.us. But I know it's hard to remember now if you're not writing them down. But what you guys can do is you guys can call the, the, the council office um, and you can get that information from, us, from my secretary. Could you give me the number? Yeah, 961 8 Could you write on the board up there or something? Yeah. 961 And what happens is a recording will come on and it will say, um, for uh, council member from District 1, Dominic Yagong, press 1. Ikeda, press 2. So it'll give you all your different uh, yeah. uh, council members, yeah? And then when you call in, then we can give you the, uh, the actual email address to send the, uh, the testimony in. Uh, if you guys can ask your family and friends to do that, that'd be wonderful. Yes, sir? Yeah, that meeting, is the uh, written um, testimony, is it read out loud? Yeah, when, when someone come and testify, they can they can read they can read a testimony. It's okay for you to just read what you wrote down. No, I mean the email. Like the email oh, okay, no, no. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, good question. Uh, that's about the email that people send in. Yeah. What happens is every council member will get a stack of, of the testimony. And believe me, that is pretty pretty powerful stuff. You know, because you're sitting there listening to the testimony, and then you look, and there's a stack of people saying the same thing. Hey, support yeah. this, support this. Yeah. It's powerful stuff, you know. So for those that cannot come, if they can do that, that'd be wonderful. So what is the time limit? Because when you have to go on the state level, you have to 24 hours to submit your statement, and that's it. They close it. Yeah. Um, it's actually, it's, it's, um, to, to be given to, well, we take the testimonies right up to the, right up to the time. However, in order to get it before the council members, before um, the item is read uh, on the 6th, is it's 12 noon on June 5th. Yeah, 12, and that way they'll make copies and then they'll make sure that the, uh, the council members get the, uh, the emails then. But I gotta emphasize, the best, strongest impact is the body oh, there, yeah. yeah. Oh, so we get, we get a lot, bunch of people there, man. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Good questions. Any other questions? Yes. What time is the meeting on the second? Okay, the meeting, um, normally a council meeting starts at <laughs> 9. I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot of tests. Anytime I anticipate there's gonna be a lot of tests, I usually move it up 8 o'clock. So, um, so I told him, you a lot of people, you think? Yeah. 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 It'll, pro it'll probably be 8. We'll, do, we'll, do, we'll probably do it at 8, and I, I can just switch the time to 8 o'clock. Yeah. And then, uh, Where is it? Uh, it's going to be at the Hilo Council Chambers in Hilo. Um, that is uh, the old county building, the one, the Black Lava Building. And it's on the bottom floor. 
and that, that's going to be a data pop on June 6th. Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, also, referring to that too, we will be there. If anybody else from the common, you can make some signs. That will be appreciated too. That will go. We can hold signs and we support oh, game management and, and aerial, yeah? So that way, the people around, they can see too. Because this will be shown a whole lot. And, and it's, it's going to be picked up by uh, by all the, the local video guys. They, there you go. They got a video. So Aaron Ball Baron. If you plan to come or whatever, you can make a sign in support of what has been discussed here. Go right ahead. It was, and also, uh, just a little thing I can say, I can say this, that Saturday, Saturday we'll be in Kalu, Maleo, that the same thing that's happening to Hilo, Kalu, they're going to take the whole island eventually. So we're going in to support Maleo too, and you can make some signs. We'll be there at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, right? Yes, 10 to 1. Yes. And we have signs from here. We hope to bring a whole lot of people to come in. You know, whoever can. If you believe in what you believe and you believe that you want it, you're going to put some things away. I'm supposed to go out and buy a baseball. I'll be honest with you. I'm canceling. I love the game, but I love this too. And not only for me, for the grandchildren and for our youngsters. So we got to put our time, we got to put it aside a little bit and show that we need it. Now is the time we got to fight, guys. I keep saying this. We're back, we're back in the wall. So push back. We've been pushed off, push back. Thank you. Any other discuss? Any other questions about anything? And all? I got one yes, thing sir? about the sheep is that I heard that in July they're going to try to take out the rest of the sheep already. So where? Where? Monica. The Palila habitat. Go away. Beep. Off Monica. Off Monica. Not, not the part of the Wine Homes land. It's separate now. People see that, but a lot of that sheep you see on the Santa Road that's in the Wine Homes land, that's separate, and then PTA. The only pocket of sheep left is Koei Game Management area by the Girl Scout Camp Kilohana in, up in that section there. And I was told that in July they're going to try to get the rest of them out of there. So, and that's our public land. That's the last public place. Do you have a date or anything? No, they just told me in July. Well, hopefully, if we, if we can pass this stuff, if it does go up to the uh, ordinance, I mean, it's just going this go, this to be this gonna be statewide, I guarantee you. This issue will blow up statewide. And uh, and uh, like I said, to have the AG call me from the time that the thing came out in the paper, <coughs> they're paying attention, yeah? So if this passes and we show up, have a good showing, you know, maybe it'll you know, have that weight, because no one wants bad publicity right yeah. before June. Yeah, in July, that's why this August is good timing. It is really is good. election, you know, August 11th is yeah. election. Yeah. So no one wants, I don't think a lot of people want this kind of bad publicity on a, a shoot on a July. So, you know, um, <coughs> I'm not saying they're going to get them all, but they're going to try. They were going to try for it. You know, Tony, it's a funny thing. Yeah, the Sierra Club was a big advocate to get all the sheep up the mountain. You know, Dunwich tells us here, the Sierra Club, bring the deer. And you kill with one hand and bring the other, yeah? The only one can stop that arrow shooting up there right now is the Sierra Club. They don't want to put the injunction in court out in the main, on San Francisco court with Judge King approving it. Right. So if anything, if anything, that arrow is shooting, don't make you say the Sierra Club had called you. Well, please, if anybody knows the Sierra Club or what, that will stop that 200. You want the deer well, in. Well, what, I, do this. what I have that I'm going to present on, on the 6th is exactly that. All because right. the Sierra Club right now is getting ready to the military for something that's going on in that area. Oh my and goodness. I can tell you right now, for you guys to know, that the helicopters flying over the Palila habitat is what's killing the birds. Because when they're swooping in there to push the sheep out, the birds, during their nesting season, is February to September. And that they're knocking the eggs and the baby birds out of the nest, or they're abandoning the nest. The population has dropped 70% since they started flying four times a year. And what does Mars do about it? Well, that's what I'm saying. Sierra Club now is going after the military because the military wants to put five docking pads above the Pila habitat on Mauna Kea for training, for high altitude training. So they're going to be flying the military helicopters up and over there. And Sierra Club is saying you cannot do that. It's called overflights. The National Park made a law in 1994 that you cannot fly aircraft over in uh, like a critical habitat or where there's endangered species. So the very helicopter that is flying right. in the uh, sea is destroying the Palila birds. Exactly. And I have all the data here. 